hairs not cooperating, giant bags under my eyeballs, terrible skin. It must be time for me to make another video. Hello, I am the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use male pronouns. Thank you for watching this video. I've got almost 200 subscribers and I haven't made a video in a million freaking years. So if you've stuck around, thanks. And if you're new, welcome. I used to make videos on this channel a few years ago. I did mostly book reviews and uh, vlogs, but they started to feel like work that I didn't want to do and I kind of fell out of love with YouTube in general so I just stopped making videos. But I'm a huge podcast listener and I had cut down my podcasts around the same time that I stopped making videos. But I've recently been upping my podcast subscription again and I started watching the Yarngasm podcast with Kristen from Volenbein Yarns and the Little Bobbin Snits podcast with Danny. And I really like their videos. I mean, they call them podcasts, but they remind me of the, the old school vlogs that everybody used to do where they just sat down and talked about all the stuff that they had done over the week or the t couple of weeks or whatever um, based on video schedule. And it kind of hit a, you know, nostalgic feeling in my brain for those types of videos. And since I've stopped making videos, I've become more and more into the yarn crafting world. So the knitting podcast types of videos really appeal to me right now. So here is the plan. I'm going to attempt to do one video a month about my knitting stuff and I'll include some of the stuff that I used to include in my vlogs when I'm reading and all that but mostly it's gonna be about crafting because that's what I do these days and I really like how knitting videos are right now in the state of things I mean lots of people have them now so this isn't anything new but I've made videos before and I really like knitting and crocheting and spinning and all these fun things so if any of you have any interest, stick around, because I'm hoping I'll do at least one of these a month. If I can do one of these a month, I might up it up to two a month later in the year, because there's a lot more stuff that I do that's knitting related from September to November. Um, but we'll see how it goes. And if you're familiar at all with uh, yarn video podcasts or yarn podcasts, they tend to have segments. And this will be no different because I found it just easier to take notes on everything I wanted to talk about if I broke it down into segments. So the first segment is stuff on sticks. I'm going to start with some finished objects. I have a box here. Um, not all of these are from sticks, but uh, most of them are. So I'm going to count them all in the stuffs on stuff on sticks. After Christmas, I decided I was going to go on a crusade to use all or most of my odds and ends yarns, my unfinished skeins, my scrap yarn. So I started making Christmas ornaments. Here is a bell. Here is a nautilus. Here is a small sweater. Here is a blue bird of happiness that is not actually blue. Uh, these were a big thing. I did these the first one of these as part of a thing with um, the Yarngasm podcast. She had a, a little ornament along and I had submitted this Bluebird of Happiness for her ornament along. What else do I have in here? I have a funky looking owl. I have a pair of small mittens. I have a star. This one's a crocheted star, but I'm including it in this section. Is there anything else? Yes. And I have a one-up mushroom from Mario. It's black because I didn't have any green uh, when I was doing it, so there is that. And they are 
varying types of yarns. Many of the yarns, I don't even know what they are anymore because they've been scraps for so long. Um, but all the patterns uh, are in a big blog post uh, that I put on my blog, and I will put a link for that in the show notes. But it's, it would take me too long to go through each of those ornaments and what the patterns were and everything. So I have a box of ornaments, and I'm hoping to continue that. This is a beanie that I made. Um, this is actually the very first hand spun that I ever bought. I bought it from a stall at the New York Renaissance Fair about a decade ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have no idea what it's made of. I have long since lost the tag, but it's it's a very rustic hand spun. You can tell that there's varying thicknesses and color balance between the two. It's a white and I don't know how it's looking on the camera right now, but it's a navy blue. Um, the white is very fluffy. The navy, navy blue, not so much. Um, this is not really a pattern. I just improvised. I did some one by one ribbing for about an inch and a half on the bottom and uh, just stockinette stitch all the way at the top. I did a little bit of decreasing on the crown, but um, not very much. I just gathered the end, um, mostly. I knit this on US 5, 3.75 millimeter circular needles, uh, and it's very warm, and I'm very glad of that because it's been very cold this past week in Connecticut. It feels like negative 20 yesterday is what it was. I mean, actual temperature was about 4, but wind chills felt like negative 15 to negative 20. I also knit this ribbed cowl uh, out of scrap yarn from the Buffalo Wool Company. I had bought one of the Splash of Color Buffalo Skies mini skeins collections at Stitches East last year, and I used most of it to create this linen stitch striped cowl, which I've actually written up the pattern and you can get the pattern for free on Ravelry um, for this particular cowl and I really enjoyed how it knit up. And while I was writing up the pattern last week, uh, I had pulled out the rest of the scraps for the yarn details and uh, just cast on a cowl while I was waiting for things to sort themselves out, waiting for my computer to load, waiting for my work computer to load while I was working from home during a snowstorm type of thing. So I just used up the rest of those mini skeins to do a ribbed cowl uh, no pattern, just cast on, I think, 88 stitches and one by one rib all the way around until I ran out of each color. Um, buffalo wool is very interesting wool. It's not the softest. I mean, it, it looks pretty fluffy here. It's not as soft as a, a very, very soft yarn. There are some blends that they have, though, that are super soft, but this is, um, just buffalo and uh, I don't know if they specify which type of sheep wool, but just buffalo and wool, so it's a little scratchy. But buffalo wool is really interesting because straight up you can throw it in the washer and dryer and it won't felt. That's how I quote unquote blocked this, is I threw it, I put it in a zipper pillowcase and put it with a pair of sweatpants in the washer and in the dryer and it fluffed right up and shrunk all the ribbon and that is a really interesting way to be able to do things because usually when you throw things like this out of sheep into the washer and dryer it becomes a felted mess so it's really interesting and I like playing with the buffalo wool I'm hoping to save up my pennies for some of the the, the fancy fancy buffalo wool that's really soft so I can play with that next year. And then I have a whole bunch of works in progress on the knitting needles. Um, first one I have is, uh, it is in, whoops, yarn escaping, this project bag, a sock bag from Tangerine Designs. Um, hopefully you can see that tag, but if you go to tangerine-designs.com, you'll find the link to our shop and everything. And it's got space ray guns on it, because I'm a huge dork. 
Um, but I've got a pair of socks in here that I cast on uh, in the car on a trip down to my sister's house because I needed something to do. So these are in the Christmas colorway um, from Red Heart, Heart and Soul with Aloe sock yarn, which is a 70% superwash wool and a 30% nylon. It's on US 1 2.25 millimeter DPNs. Um, and it's a it's my go-to vanilla sock pattern, which is the Soldier Socks by Jessica Day George. Uh, and I've got a TARDIS stitch marker. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. Let's just bring that as close to the camera as possible. Um, I make stitch markers out of Shrinky Dinks, and I sell them on my Etsy shop. And that was one of the duds because it was mostly an oval and not actually a circle. Um, that's a, a basic sock. Uh, I pretty much have that pattern memorized, so it's my, my driving when other people are driving the car project. I also have this, which is in a bag I made out of scrap jeans and an old t-shirt. Uh, it is a hood scarf, a hooded scarf, uh, for a co-worker of mine who commissioned me to make her one. Here is part of the scarf. It's on US 8 circulars, so 5.0 millimeter needles. Um, here is the hood, which is a rectangle. And it is out of Lion Brand Woolies Chunky in the colorway Mulberry. Um, I prefer to use acrylic blended yarns for commissions for people that I know in real life uh, because especially for big things like this where if this gets really dirty and you want to wash it I'm not entirely sure my co-workers aren't going to uh, just throw them in the washer and dryer anyway so might as well make it out of yarns that uh, are easy to care for um, it is a pattern of my own design. I mean, it's nothing big. It's two rectangles that are sewn together. But I will be writing up a quick pattern for it because my mom wants a copy of it so that she can make a hood scarf at some point as well. I also have this, which is in another bag I made out of old jeans and a t-shirt. It's another commission for a coworker who is moving at the end of March, so I have to get on it. It is a hat. It is the Graham hat by Jennifer Adams. I am knitting this currently on US 4 3.5 millimeter DPNs. Uh, this is another stitch marker that I made. It was, oops, a hair. Um, it was a set of beads that I saw at Joann's in a clearance bin. So I just put a jump ring in them. And, uh, I say beads. They're really charms, but it's just a bunch of red stars. So I, uh, put jump rings in them and I use them as stitch markers. Now, this yarn, I love this yarn. I knew I wasn't going to make myself anything in this yarn, but it is a beautiful, beautiful purple, pink, blue, green sort of tonal variation. Uh, it's called Mermaid Tales. It's by The Ugly Room, who is a local spinner dyer type person. Um, I believe she's a part of a, a local Connecticut guild because I, the only things I've ever bought from The Ugly Room, I've bought at the Connecticut Renaissance Fair. Um, here's the uh, tag. Um, her shop is no longer at Etsy.com, but there is a link to, I believe, a link to her her new home, uh, and it's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a Graham hat that's kind of slouchy, and it will have a big white pom pom on the top of it because that's what my coworker wants. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll look fantastic when I'm done with it because everything in that yarn looks amazing. She had commissioned a pair of Vancouver Fog fingerless gloves out of that yarn and it was beautiful so I'm excited to to see how the hat knits up and my last work in progress on sticks 
is this, which is in my yarn chicken bag, which I got out of the Knit Prince Kickstarter from Gussler Designs. Um, I believe they have this bag up in their shop, but um, it, it just cracks me up because it's a, a knitting chicken, a yarn chicken. Uh, I also got some really cool postcards out of uh, that Kickstarter. And this project is Hazel the Humpback Whale, uh, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and I forgot to write down the name of the lady who wrote it. This whale is really kind of sad looking right now because she has no fins attached. Um, she does have eyeballs though, which I'm very proud that I, I had eyeballs in the right size for my, my humpback whale here. Um, this is out of holiday yarns. I don't know specifically the yarn content or the colorways because this was from a sort of grab bag uh, from Stitches East a couple of years ago. She had a booth, and in front of her booth was a one of those 16-gallon tubs full of mini skeins and ends from skeining up her usual yarn. And she was selling them at $20 for whatever you can fit into your hand. Uh, that was a fun booth to, to shop at because everybody was comparing the size of their hands and you know, oh, my hands are so tiny, your hands are so much bigger. Here, here's $20, and I will fill your hand with yarn. <laughs> so, there, I think I held somebody's yarn for them, because they had very tiny hands. But here's the whale so far. I do have fins in here. Here are her, her yellow fins that are going to be attached towards her upper body. And I am finishing up the yellow in the tail fins and I'm starting to finish the tail fins in this hand spun hand dyed yarn from the Merry Little Lamb who is another local Connecticut spinner dyer but I haven't seen her at the Connecticut Renaissance Fair in a few years now so I don't know if she still has a working website or what I believe these are US zeros, 2.25 millimeters, maybe a 2 millimeter, 2 millimeter, um, but it's a little loose in the needle gauge for the US zero, so they might be double zeros, which I guess would be a 1.75, but needle gauges I have don't go less than US zero, so I'm not entirely sure. I have another stitch marker I made on here, it'll be hard to see. See if I can get that to focus. Um, that is the freakish lemon standing around doing nothing. I had a brief uh, comic strip about the lemon and his friend the angry sheep. Um, so I have these doodles of the lemons and I like to put them on things. This next segment is stuff on hooks. I have no finished hooky things to show you today, but I do have two works in progress. This first one I started last night because I couldn't help myself. Uh, I started learning how to Tunisian crochet, so I'm practicing on just a, a washcloth. I have a lot of leftover cotton from the great washcloth fiasco of a couple of years ago, so I figure I'll make a bunch of them and either sell them or I will keep them around for housewarming presents, um, since I did that for my sister when she moved out a couple of years ago. Uh, it's just the basic Tunisian crochet stitch uh, in lily, sugar, and cream, uh, hot green, and with stripes of psychedelic from lily, sugar, and cream. I'm um, using a size I, 5.5 millimeter bamboo crochet hook, Tunisian crochet hook, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, the front looks like what you would expect from Tunisian crochet, uh, if you've seen it around, but I was surprised by the back, which looks like reverse stockinette. Nobody ever shows you the back of stuff, but uh, that's really interesting, um, that it's fairly crochet looking on the front and knitting looking on the back. That's, that's pretty cool. And then I have an ongoing crochet project in this t-shirt bag, old t-shirt. It's my heavy metals bag from Think Geek, um, an old t-shirt where I wore out the armholes. Um, 
And this is a scrap acrylic yarn, worsted weight, granny square, something. It will probably be a few lap size blankets when I'm finished going through all of my worsted weight acrylic yarn. A few years ago, I made this blanket based off of blankets I saw on the Attic 24 blog. Um, and everybody I've shown this to really enjoys it. So I might make a bunch of smaller ones to sell um, since people seem to like this type of blanket so much. And I have a crazy ton of leftover acrylic worsted weight yarn since the start of my stash was basically family members and neighbors finding out I was knitting and crocheting and just giving me all of their leftover stuff that they've had around for years. So I'm trying to use all that up so I just have the stuff that I bought. <laughs> Cause most of that stuff I'm not gonna use for very much. So I figure a bunch of granny square, rainbow randomized lap blankets or kid size blankets would be a good way to use up all that acrylic worsted weight yarn. And now for stuff on spindles and wheels. I also spin yarn, so I've got some finished hand spun to show you and a couple of works in progress-ish. So the first thing I finished uh, the other week was this beautiful worsted weight hand spun. Um, let me put that down. This is a 100 yard skein and this is a about a 20 yard mini skein. Um, that's how I break them down in my shop. This will go up in my shop. It is Highland Handmade Superwash BFL in the Edge of the Inferno colorway. But this finished yarn I'm going to call Semath Naur, which I'm guessing is how you say that, which is the name of the forge or the platform where the forge was located where Sauron forged the One Ring. Um, Edge of the Inferno. It seemed like the, the logical nerdy leap to make. And this is beautiful yarn. I am very pleased with how this spun up. I did the um, fractal method. So I split it in half and I spun one half as is and I split the other half into a whole bunch of little little pieces and spun them individually, um, which made this beautiful, beautiful yarn, um, which will find a very happy home, I'm sure. And I spun that on my Ashford Kiwi 2 wheel. Um, I also spun this on my Ashford Kiwi 2 wheel. Um, let's get the two plies up here. This is from Yarn Crafters, which was a, uh, a booth at the Coventry Farmer's Market. Um, this is hand-dyed merino top. There was three ounces of it in total. Uh, this is, again, two-ply fractal spinning from my wheel. And it's this beautiful, like, rusty red color, um, 100 yard. It's about a fingering weight. It's a fingering sport. It's kind of in between. And this is a, a mini skein in about 20 yards. Um, weight and wraps per inches will be in the Etsy information when I put these up. Um, but this color, there was no colorway written on the tag, but this color reminds me of Luke Skywalker's Land Speeder in Star Wars. So I'm going to call this X34, which is the make and model of the Land Speeder. I also have this, which was a, was this it? Yes, this is the chain ply leftover single because I always end up with one single much longer than the other one um, in about 33 yards. This will also be up as a mini skein as an X34, but that spun up really nice. And then I have this extremely sparkly mini skein. That's about 20 yards. Uh, it's from Greenwood Fiberworks. It, it was about a half ounce mini bat with uh, merino and a whole bunch of sparkly stuff. I don't have a name for this yet. It will go up in the shop. 
uh, any hand spun that I make I tend to put up in the shop because I have far too much yarn as it is so somebody else should get a chance to play with it because it's gonna take me years to get around to it anyway even if it's if I end up using it so I haven't come up with a color name for this yet but it was a carnival bat that came with um, a thing I'll show you later and I think that's about a, a fingering sport weight I'm trying to practice down to get down to a fingering weight um, for an upcoming project. And then this is mostly finished. I need to wash it and uh, reskin it, but uh, this was a mini merino braid from Greenwood Fiber Works. Um, here is the tag. In her colorway, Retro Girl. Um, I did it as a gradient, so it's like a, a Neapolitan gradient. And I'm actually going to name this one uh, Simmons after Agent Gemma Simmons from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because uh, th this reminds me of season one Agent Simmons. It's kind of soft, but the colors, you know, they, they're very lovely and uh, soft. And just kind of nice and wants to make you happy. Like, that was season one Gemma Simmons. I do have more fiber braids, which I'll show you in a bit, um, in Merino from Greenwood Fiber Works. And if one spins up and it looks like a Fitz, I might sell them as a, a matched set of Fitz and a Simmons. Um, and that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this one actually made it down to a fingering weight, which is nice. And then I don't have any hand spun that is actively being spun, but last week I spent a whole evening dividing up a pound and four ounces of um, a blended roving. You can find that. Here it is. Um, it's a blend of Corydell Finn Rambouillet cross sheep. Or something or maybe those are the, the sheep have been crossed and this is the wool that they produce but it's a pound and four ounces that I bought in a giant ball at the New England Fiber Festival up in Massachusetts um, and I'm going to fractal spin that too except I, I divided it into quarters so two quarters I'm gonna spin as is and then the other half is broken up into tiny little little bags, um, but I don't know if I'm going to spin this on the wheel or on a drop spindle yet because I might be a crazy person, but I want to spin this for the maple leaf shawl um, that I don't remember who it's by, but it's a beautiful shawl and it needs like 900 to 1000 yards of fingering weight yarn, so I'm going to spin some fingering weight yarn and knit it up, but I don't know if I'm crazy or very crazy yet. Um, but I'm gonna practice some more before I actually start spinning this giant bag of fiber. This segment, because I'm a crazy person and I have to have my hands in as many crafts as I can, is called Stuff With Thread. There's not gonna be much here and there's probably not going to be much updated from month to month here because well, I'm hoping next month one of these will be a finished object, but the other one might take a while for me to finish. The first stuff with thread is this very sadly behind Christmas cross stitch from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It was a mystery cross stitch pattern that I fell very behind on very quickly. Um, it's on a, an off-white uh, 18 count Ada, Ida, whatever, however you pronounce that fabric name. Um, and I'm using all the colors that she recommends. Um, the only change I've made to the pattern at all is I outlined the white in this, in one strand of the blue. I don't know if you can see that in this camera. It's kind of hard to see in real life. Um, it's easier to see like if I cross my eyes. But, um,. <laughs> Because the white and the off-white ended up being very, very close in color. So I think in the future, uh, I'm going to add some additional tea dye on top of this off-white, uh, just to differentiate it from the white. Um, 
I think the border is also in white, but I'm going to outline, outline that in red, I think, uh, to make the border stand out because the border is so intricate, whereas in the panels themselves it's snowflakes and, and snowballs and things, so it's not as necessary for it to pop out as much. Um, but I'm hoping this will be finished by March uh, because it is a Christmas <laughs> pattern. Um, also, I have this little needle holder hedgehog magnetic guy. He's from Tangerine Designs as well. Um, she's got a couple, she's got an owl, I think, and a hedgehog. Um, there might be something else I don't remember offhand, but I find that very handy so that I don't lose my embroidery needle constantly. And the other thing I'm making with thread will probably take me a long time to finish, especially since I'm fighting with my sewing machine. We're having a disagreement. It is a quilt. Uh, here's my quilt notebook. Um, the pattern is from this book, The Weekend Quilter, and it is called A Piece of Summer. That's what it looks like in the book. It's about a twin size quilt. Um, let me put that down. But I made up this notebook for when I went to the fabric store to get stuff. Some of this is scrap fabric from my mom and some of it is stuff that I bought. It's based off of these dragons. Um, my mom also started a quilt based on this dragon fabric that she had. So it's pretty hilarious that we both have unfinished quilts upstairs that are based on uh, dragon fabric. Um, but this is the basic pattern. The dragon goes where these green triangles are. And then here are all the fabrics that are going with it. This is on the front. This is um, the blue, the green, the pink, the yellow, the red, the white, and the purple are all on the front. This starry um, blue fabric is for the back. And I have upstairs some orange um, that blends in really well with um, this red uh, to do for the border. But I might change my mind on that. Who knows? Um, but the quilt top is finished and I started the actual quilting part, but I'm fighting with my sewing machine, so I don't know when I will be making progress on that. This is my stuff to stash. This is new things that I bought that I want to show you uh, that are either going in my stash or tools to use to use up my stash. First thing I bought was a bunch of Tunisian crochet hooks. Um, you saw one of them earlier, I got some more sizes because I got a Joann's gift card for my birthday in January and I wanted to do Tunisian crochet so I bought a bunch of hooks. So I had a range to start with. I also bought from Greenwood Fiber Works a sample uh, mini braid fiber extravaganza. Uh, you saw Simmons and the sparkly uh, mini skein were a part of this group. Um, here are the rest of them. They're 0.4 to 0.6 ounces. I listed them on Raveler Ravelry as 0.5 since that's the average. But yeah, I'm hoping there is going to be a Fitz out of here. I'm thinking this one might be Fitz. This is uh, Lavender Hedgerow. It might turn out grayer than, than it looks here, but I'm thinking this might be fits. You know, muted greens and browns and blue and uh, purple that's almost gray. That might be a fits, but we'll see. I have ordered two more lightweight drop spindles that have not come in yet. Uh, because these are the drop spindles that I currently have. Well, I have one more upstairs that is uh, too heavy to do lightweight yarns with. This is my go-to lightweight yarn drop spindle, which I bought for $10 at a farmer's market. And the wheel is, you can see, very loose and it's coming unglued. Uh, I'm just going to break it if I try to do much more with it. Uh, I spun the sparkly bat on it and I think that was too much. This is light-ish weight. It's about a one ounce. Um, drop spindle, but it wobbles. It's not quite even. I didn't intend to buy this, but it came as a set with um, my Nitty Knotty, because my Nitty Knotty is interchangeable. I can take off the ends and put longer dowels inside. 
um, and it came with a drop spindle so not my choice exactly but I have two more drop spindles coming uh, which I will show you next month because I will probably have spun many things on them by then and another segment because I am a crazy person this is stuff for Etsy I do have an Etsy shop I have embroidered notebooks I have stitch markers I have my hand spun I have little zipper pouches but I'm fighting with my sewing machine so whatever's up there is it for now um, right now I also have Christmas ornaments and Christmas cards until those listings run out and then I'll renew them again towards the season next year um, I don't have any new inventory except for the finished hand spun but I have been working on some stuff for the shop um, a little behind the scenes stuff uh, but that I thought that would be interesting to share with you the first thing I did is redesign the stitch marker packaging there was a problem with a couple of orders where the stitch markers were getting crushed in the mail and I've been petting them pretty heavily um, but that's no guarantee so what it used to be was a tag that folded over the top of this edge and it was just a bag of stitch markers now the label is in the stitch marker bag uh, you can see here my Batman and Robin stitch markers um, so this top zipper ziplock part uh, can be folded down and put into a jewelry box thing um, so now your stitch markers when they come to you will be safe and sound my Etsy st shop still hasn't reflected this change because I haven't restocked all of the different stitch markers that I make so once I have them all remade uh, I will do a photo shoot for all the new packaging and put them up in a shop update so that's very exciting I also updated a couple of packaging things um, my thank you notes they used to be little folded cards little half fold cards and then for a while it was little cards and envelopes because that they were on clearance uh, but now it's just it's just a thank you card with a button sticker because I love my button stickers and my lemon on the back uh, nice easy uh, but you know shows my appreciation when you buy something from me and then I updated my washing directions cards um, my washing directions for any scarves that I sold on there because I do Doctor Who scarves occasionally as well and uh, I did a couple of Gandalf scarves last year that sold really well um, but I always hand wrote the directions now my handwriting people have told me is very um, is nice to look at but it is hard to read individual letters or words if you don't know what it's supposed to mean um, because I, I do write cursive and it's not very neat it, it's very stylized but it's not very neat so I made up some printed out washing direction cards to throw in with any um, scarves or knitted or crocheted objects uh, that you might buy from me that's it for shop stuff short and sweet usually it'll just be um, if I have anything new for the shop or if I'm doing a shop update that month I'm not doing a shop update this month because I haven't had the time because I've had crazy starditis but um, in the future I will announce a shop, shop update in this video other stuff this is where I'm gonna talk about stuff that I'm reading or playing or watching or any of that so what I'm reading currently is book number two of all the wrong questions when did you see her last by Lemony Snicket I really enjoy Lemony Snicket's writing it's a kids book but it's really fun and ridiculous and I love the way he writes and this is about his mystery adventures as a kid um, you might know Lemony Snicket as the author who wrote the series of unfortunate events where he was kind of in the book but not really in the book um, but this is about him as a kid when he got his start doing whatever it is that he does and I'm almost finished with it and I have the third book that I'm gonna read after this um, and I'm really enjoying this series I am playing Lego Lord of the Rings I'm nearing completion I'm at 83 or 84 percent done uh, I pretty much play exclusively Lego games these days I like that it's there is some skill involved but not enough that you're gonna get stuck absolutely completely stuck 
um, and not be able to progress any further in the game. At this point, I don't have time for that, and I don't like spending the money on a game where I'm going to play half of it and never finish it because by the time I come back to it and forget how much I hate that level I'm stuck at, I don't remember how to play the game. These are, you know, you pick it up, you play, huzzah. If you want to complete the game, you can. If not, you don't have to. Um, but I get a lot of um, gameplay time out of the money I spend on these games, so um, I think this one's actually my brother's that he got for Christmas, but I play all the LEGO games. I love LEGO games. And I love LEGO Lord of the Rings. It's super fun. I'm not currently binge watching anything on Netflix right now. I am going to stop my Netflix DVD subscription, but I'm going to finish watching the Teen Titans DVDs. Uh, I think I've got two or three more of them uh, before I kill that. So I am watching Teen Titans because why not? Um, the only shows I'm currently up to date on that I'm watching ongoing are Agent Carter, The Flash, and Arrow because I watch them with my parents when they're being aired. I'm behind on everything else. <laughs> it is absurd. And part of that is due to podcasts. Part of that is due to just not having enough time in the day to sit down and watch shows. Also in this part of uh, my videos, I'm going to recommend a podcast. This month I'm going to actually recommend three because I have to recommend the Yarngasm podcast with Kristen from Vol and Vine Yarns and the Little Bobbins Knits podcast um, here on YouTube because they really inspired me to get back into video making and to drop spindling and trying new things and it's it's thanks to them that this mess is up on the internet. But I'm also going to recommend a non-knitting podcast and I think most of my podcast recommendations are going to be non-knitting podcasts because it's really easy to find everybody's favorite knitting podcasts. But I'm going to recommend uh, this month the Phileas Club, which is a podcast um, done once a month uh, where people from around the world will discuss world news events. Um, I don't think they've released one for February yet, but the one from January was about uh, was about the shooting in France at the uh, Charlie magazine. Um, it's hosted by Patrick Beja, from, who is French. He's from France. He lives in France. He is French. Um, and that episode in particular was one of the best Phileas Club episodes I've ever heard. It had Patrick from France, it had Randy from California, um, there was a fellow from Germany, there was a fellow from Australia, and probably the most interesting perspective on the whole thing was a fellow named Mahmoud from the United Arab Emirates, I believe. It was a fantastic discussion to listen to and really had multiple points of view about how this event occurred. Usually the episodes have more than one world event that they discuss, but this one just kind of encompassed everything because of how it was perceived around the world. Um, it's, it's a great podcast. Um, you can find it on iTunes or Stitcher or any of those podcast aggregates, or if you can't find it at those, at wherever you get your podcasts, go to frenchspin.com for, uh, Patrick Beja, and there will be links there for the Phileas Club. And I think I've just about killed my battery in this camera, so I'm gonna wrap this up. This will probably be the longest video that I have out of any of the videos that I'm going to do in the next year, so I'm sorry it was so long, but beginning of the month I was doing January and February things, so it's gonna be a little long. You can find the show notes and my blog and everything that I do over at FreakishLemon.com and you can follow me as FreakishLemon on Twitter, Ravelry, Instagram. My Etsy shop is at FreakishLemon.etsy.com. FreakishLemon, I'm around. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this was interesting. I'm really hoping I can get this video edited and up and not uh, destroy everything. So that's it, and I will see you in March. Goodbye.